All right, there we go. Thank you so much for joining us on this, our eighth monthly community town hall forum. A quick word about the PLC, the Parkville Living Center. The Parkville Living Center is a community center that whose mission it is, is to celebrate and provide space for the spirit of love in our community. Some of the ways that we're doing that is providing a coffee time here in our center for people to come and enjoy a cup of coffee with no membership, no fees, no, no exchange or transaction needed. We have senior programs that you'll hear about uh, a little later. We have programs for, called Money Talk for financial budgeting, book clubs and community events occur here in the Parkville Living Center. Um, and also the, the Town Hall Forum, this event that you're at right now. The Town Hall Forum is, is our way of, of showing how a community is made up of both its services and its people. And the Town Hall brings people and services together, deepening relationships and shining a light on the ways that we can support, engage, and relate to our community and others. The format for our Community Town Hall Forum is three 15-minute presentations followed by a 15-minute question and answer, answer panel. We'll bring the tables together at the question and answer panel, and we'll have everybody up here, and we'll get questions from our Zoom audience as well as our in-house audience. Um, you'll notice some microphones. These microphones are only for the Zoom participants, so there's no speakers projecting, but this is what makes sure that the Zoom participants can hear us. So that's why there's microphones, and if we can use the microphones, then we'll be heard. Another uh, piece of housekeeping is questions from our Zoom participants. We'll, um, we request those to come in via the chat and our director uh, will um, elevate those questions at our question and answer time. And uh, we'll be able to, to field those questions from Zoom via the chat. So please, if you have questions, enter them in on the chat via your Zoom and we'll address those at our question and answer portion. So as I said, this town hall is a way to hear common language and deepen relationships between the services that exist in our community. And so what we do is encourage continued conversation. We don't necessarily, this is, doesn't end at 7.30. Hopefully these conversations continue and spill out into your everyday life. So without further ado, I want to introduce our first speaker, Deborah MacArthur. Deborah has lived in Parkville for over 40 years. She's worked at Park University for 24 years, serving as the Director of Academic Support Services. She's been a member of AAUW, that's the American Association of University Women, for over 10 years and currently serves as the President of the Parkville Branch and as the College University Relations Chair for Missouri's AAUW and Reentry Scholarship Coordinator for the Kansas City Interbranch Council. Her husband is pretty sure She's doing retirement wrong. So uh, without further ado, here's Deborah MacArthur speaking from the AAUW. Thank you, Marcus. And uh, thank you all for being here this evening. And it's my pleasure to be able to talk with you a little bit tonight and tell you a little bit about AAUW, the American Association of University Women. All right, I'm going to start our PowerPoint here. AAUW is a national organization, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a slide up here in a moment that shows our national website. Um, on the national level, we have over 170,000 members, and we have, oh, here we go, we're going to get to it there. And our goal is right there on our page, equity. Uh, we are all about equity for girls and women, making sure that women and girls growing up have equal opportunity and have access to the kinds of things they need in order to be successful in life. So our, our mission is advancing gender equity through research, education, and advocacy. And as I said, over 170,000 members nationwide. AAUW was founded in 1881. We've been around for quite a long time, uh, long before women had the right to vote. 
but we continue as a strong organization today. Next slide, please. So one of our platforms is economic security. We want women to, to be able to have economic security in their lives. Um, and so in order to accomplish that, we conduct ongoing research into the gender pay gap to look at why it is that in the 21st century, women are making only about 82 cents to a, a man's dollar. And for minority women, of course, it's even lower. And so that is something that, um, that AAUW generally it, or continues research on. That pay, gender pay gap also has a powerful impact on women's student debt because uh, now women make up more than half of college graduates, but they, it takes them much longer to pay off their student debt. Sorry about that. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we do have a program to educate women on salary negotiation skills. Uh, this is something that is important from a woman from the for a woman from the time she enters the field of work, and that pay gap only gets larger the more years she works. And so, it's really important to teach women how to successfully negotiate salary. And so, that's called a work smart program. I have little cards on the table at the back that tell people how to access. It's a free online program that anyone can go in and use, gives you powerful tools for being able to negotiate salary. So if you or someone you know is in a position where they are trying to move up in their career and not sure just how to go about that, it's an excellent program. We also advocate for passage at, of legislation at the federal, the state, and the local level to uh, to help to narrow that gender pay gap, but also make sure that women have equal rights and opportunities. Next slide. Education is, of course, a major concern of AAUW. We are in, we want to encourage women to to achieve and to complete their education. Um, we again are researching things like the STEM gap and why it is that women are not going into STEM fields at the same rate as their male peers, uh, sexual harassment on campus, student debt, women in higher education leadership. Um, even though women outnumber men in higher education in the leadership, they are lagging far behind. Um, at AAUW also provides scholarships, fellowships, and grants for women in different fields, and that's an ongoing program, and details about how to apply for those grants are on our website. Uh, we support STEM programs at all level, K through higher education, and we also provide legal advocacy for women who are um, who have entered Title IX complaints or other gender equity issues. Next slide. Advocacy is the way we is part of the way we do our work. And through AAUW, we have access to a, a weekly newsletter called the Two Minute Ad, um, Two Minute Advocate, and it keeps us up to date on pending legislation at the national and state and local level, so that we can see what issues are things like the, the Paycheck Fairness Act and other issues that may be coming up uh, in the state legislators and legislatures. And we then can contact our legislators. We have a whole network of women across the state who are working with state legislators and re regularly in contact with them to voice our, our support or are not support <laughs> for things that might be going on. Um, AAUW is a nonpartisan organization. We do not support candidates of any party for office. We do, however, speak out on issues. And so sometimes there are election uh, matters that have to do with issues like voting rights and paycheck fairness and things like that. And we do voice our support on those types of, of issues. Um, AAUW also has a strong organization here across the state of Missouri. 
We have, um, oh, go ahead, next slide, please. We have over 500 members across the state of Missouri and 17 local branches across the state. Four of those are here in the Kansas City area and they make up what is known as the Interbranch Council. Um, even though we are in Parkville, we also work with women in our Kansas City Northland branch, our Independence branch and our Kansas City Missouri branch so that we can get more done together. Um, through the efforts of our local members, 18 cities across the state issued proclamations in honor of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, including Parkville. We sponsor STEM programs for kids, essay contests and scholarships. We also sponsor statewide programs that take place on Zoom. One of those will be this Thursday. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the Kansas City Interbranch Council last year awarded $8,000 in scholarships to local women who earned what we call a re-entry scholarship, meaning they had been out of school for five years or more and had returned to school. And we helped them with funding for that. Next slide. Our Parkville branch has been, a lot, has been around for over 85 years. We were founded in 1935 on the Park, Univers Park College campus at that time. Um, our branch works with the university. We sponsored many Smart Start workshops, which is the college women's equivalent of our Work Start program. And it helps our graduating students know how to enter the field and, and command a salary commensurate with their male peers. Um, our research shows that even just one year after graduation, women are already lagging behind men in their pay. Uh, we, we do a, uh, award a reentry scholarship from our branch every year to a park student. Uh, we also support the Speak Food Pantry here at the church with donations from our members in order to purchase feminine hygiene products because we became aware that that was a need. Um, we're active at both the local and the state level. So we have members who are serving in that interbranch council. We also have several of our members who serve on state committees or as state chairs. And we hold our meetings on the first Thursday of each month. And this year we've partnered with the Parkville Living Center to be able to hold our meetings here. So we're ex really excited about that. Next slide. So our first big upcoming event is gonna be this Thursday. Now this is a state sponsored event. So this is not our particular branch that's sponsoring that, but this is a Zoom program, um, Women's Suffrage, Racism and Intersectionality one year after the 19th Amendment Centennial. Uh, Missouri women were very instrumental in the suffrage movement, but Unfortunately, at that time, in the early 1900s, um, our sisters of color were often excluded from those efforts. They were supportive of those efforts, but they were often left in the background at anything that had to do with uh, public support of those. And there were some, some reasons for that, but that's something that we're addressing. Um, our, we have a big movement nat nationwide in our organization for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're trying to bring some of these issues to light now so that we can hold honest discussions about them. So I think this will be a really interesting event. Um, these two ladies are, are experts in that field. Also, Mayor Nan Johnston is gonna be here that evening because it is Parkville Celebration Day uh, of the recognition of the suffrage amendment. Um, our first branch activity of the year will be here next Thursday on September 2nd. And we are uh, presenting an AAUW webinar program called Two Steps Back, The Impact of COVID-19 on Women Entrepreneurs. So our meeting will be here at the church. We'll have some light refreshments and a business meeting after that. We have some other exciting meetings coming up this year. In October, we're gonna be showing a video presentation called Rigged, the Voter Suppression Playbook. Um, it is 
very interesting. It's also, I find it personally quite infuriating what's going on across the country in a majority of states that are really trying to restrict access to the ballot. And uh, that's, the, that's the topic of that video program. Uh, on, in November, we have someone from the Missouri Humanities Council, Alyssa Ford, who is gonna be talking about soothing the savage hearts of man, women's suffrage in rural Missouri. Um, in February, we have an author who's gonna come in and talk to us about some pioneers, uh, some female pioneers in aviation. And uh, Nancy has some wonderful stories to share, uh, especially about some women pilots that she has interviewed. She is a, an author of books for young people, and so we'll have books for sale at that event too. Uh, in March, we're hoping to get some of our Legal Advocacy Fund plaintiffs who were involved in a, a lawsuit on a Title IX case against St. Cloud University. And um, AAUW has provided legal fees to help them in that lawsuit. Uh, on April 7th, we have uh, Ann Enig from the Girl Scouts, who's going to be coming and talking to us about the STEM and STEAM programs that Girl Scouts offers to young women to help them uh, go into those career fields. Um, I do have membership materials for AAUW at the back of the room, um, a little sheet of paper that tells how you can join online. Like many organizations, the last year has been pretty difficult because we had to hold all of our meetings by Zoom. Um, right now, we're being cautious. Uh, we're holding our meetings in person as much as we can. Um, as things change, we, we are also going to be offering Zoom links so that people can join who aren't necessarily comfortable coming in person or in case the situation is such that it's not really safe for us to meet in person. So, um, but we are looking for more people to help us reach that goal of equity for women and girls. So we'd like, love to invite you to join our organization. Uh, we have male members as well as female members um, and from many different countries around the world, but we'd like you to join our Parkville branch and we're really uh, looking forward to a good year ahead. So. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Deborah. That it, I'm just so excited to hear about the ways in which both women and men can come together as allies, as the, the focus group to really um, see change happen both on the local level and on a larger scale. Um, and the ongoing ways that there are to connect, I hope that, uh, that the, the community hears that and, and feels that over time and, and comes to participate in, in the many great activities that they have. And we'll make these activities and links to their events available on the Living Center's website as well. So um, you can find that on those two sources and we'll send it out in an email. Um, so now let me introduce Karen Wagner. Karen graduated from John Brown University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. She and husband Roger have two daughters, Megan and husband have two daughters, Megan and husband Thomas, who have four children, and Emily and husband Joe. Roger and Karen reside in the Platte City area. Here is Karen. Carrying my phone, just sometimes I get a little bit wound up. I want to make sure I don't go over. So thank you so much for having. Uh, me this evening to talk about Hillcrest Black County. It's something that I get very passionate about and uh, really like to share with you what, what terrific things are happening within our organization. Uh, I know we've got a PowerPoint coming up, but I'll just quickly tell you the organization started in 1976 in Liberty. Someone saw a need uh, to help those that are homeless. It's not your typical person that you see on the corner. The, the folks that we work with are working homeless. Uh, they have jobs, but they, they just can't make ends meet. And a lot of times they're single moms with children. Uh, we're seeing a lot more dads, single dads, and then families. So we see across the board uh, a lot of people in need right now. So in 1976, it started in Liberty. And in 2002, the Platte County uh, area is, was when they first established their first uh, presence here in Platte County. In 2015, we did split off from uh, the main group. Uh, to form Hillcrest Platte County, 
and uh, that allows us to address the needs that we see right here in our own neighborhood. So Hillcrest Park County is a Christian organization that offers supportive services for individuals and families who are homeless or insecurely housed to achieve sustainable independence. HBC's goal, and I hate to stand here and read this to you, but it's important, is to break the welfare poverty cycle. The program provides a rent-free, fully furnished apartment with access to a food pantry. While in the program, our residents are expected to work full-time, follow a strict budgeting regimen, and attend classes to learn about basic life skills. We have a 95% success rate with families who complete the program. This is kind of hard to see, but I created this because anytime I'm out in the community, the first thing someone says is, oh, I love your thrift. Everyone knows our thrift stores, but they don't fully understand what those thrift stores do. Um, the, the pinnacle of what we do at the top of the, the triangle there is our housing program. That's what we're all about. That's what we are in business for. That's what we all work. The goal we work towards is to graduate uh, families into self-sufficiency and, and have to have the ability to be contributing members of society and, and to be able to take care of themselves. So the bottom part of the triangle is our thrift operations. We have three stores, one in Platte City and two uh, down here in the southern end of Platte County. Uh, the big one in Picture Hills and then the one right behind that is our clearance outlet where things go that may not make the grade but are still uh, sellable, still usable. Uh, and that provides uh, an opportunity for those that can't afford thrift prices to still go in and be able to shop for their families with dignity. So the thrift operation provides the funding for everything else that we do. The middle part of that triangle is our operations department. And my title is director of operations and events. And that is what I, I run. And that is what makes the, the wheels go around basically to make sure we have apartments that are, are furnished and, and maintained for our families. Uh, we make sure the lights are on, I paid the bills. Uh, we handle all of the marketing, all of the um, communications, volunteer recruitment. And so that, that middle part of that, that triangle is, is what we're doing to, to basically lift up that housing program. So all of that is required to carry out that housing program. Our 90 day transitional housing uh, requirements uh, they have to submit to budget counseling. Many of them have never had a budget. That's part of the problem is they do not know how to say, I pay my rent first, I pay my utilities, I pay my child's daycare, I buy groceries. If there's anything left over, that's my discretionary spending. And so they're accountable for every penny. And if they're off, then they are docked um, points. And if they, they do, if that happens too many times, they're asked to leave the program because there are too many people that are waiting to get into that program that are serious about it and really do want to do the work uh, to become self-supporting. They do have to submit to life skill classes. Those are every Tuesday night. And uh, that's where our director is tonight is filling in uh, in that, that class. They have to work full-time. It can be two part-time jobs or it can be one full-time job, but they have to be working 40 hours a week. We have a curfew. If you don't have rules, you, you will never learn how to be responsible, productive individuals. So they have to be in at 10. Uh, they do have weekly apartment checks. They have to pass that apartment check and they meet, meet weekly with their caseworker as well. And so this is all part of that program and that accountability to teach them you know, how to be uh, more responsible. Next steps to success. We found that we had families that um, after the 90 days, really weren't quite ready to move on. Uh, sometimes we have mamas that are working to get their kids back out of, uh, of social services. Uh, they've lost them from poor choices. And so while they're with us, the state really likes our program. So they help us work with those families to get their kids back out of foster uh, care. They, um, sometimes they go into next steps to success because their debt is so large, and that's one of the things in budget counseling that we work on, you know, somebody may have gotten evicted and, and you know, when you have an eviction, you cannot uh, rent, uh, no one will rent to you. And so we work with that prior landlord and say, okay, uh, you know, Joe's got $5,000 that he owes you and you're not going to get that. So will you take 2,500? And so we work with them. So he's happy because 
you know, he's gotten part of that uh, rent back and then they clean that off of his record and then he can go on uh, and be successful in, in leasing another apartment. And so some of those folks just need a little extra time. So we have a campus in Platt study designated as our next steps to success. So those folks that are working the program very successfully, working very hard, but just need a little bit of extra time, we move that, them into that program and it's not quite as stringent. We give them a little bit of leeway. They pay $250 a month uh, rent when they graduate from that program, if they've been uh, done a great job, if they've followed the rules, kept their apartment clean, and when they check out, the apartment is clean, we refund all of that. But what that does is that establishes a rental history for them. So we can say, yes, they have paid on time. So that helps them when they move forward uh, because they have a referral from us. And so, uh, and that's also another little nest egg that they can take with them when they go. So it's education-based, it's reunification of families, it's debt repayment, uh, the rent is low, and then they meet monthly with their caseworker rather than weekly. The young adult program, we started about, I think, 2017. We found that there was a need in the community. Uh, there were high school kids that were sleeping on couches and in cars and in parks, and uh, we had a high school counselor call us and say, can you just take this kid overnight until I can figure out where to, where to send him? because he has nowhere to go tonight. And so that kind of birthed, we knew that need was there, but that just kind of pushed us to, to go ahead and, and create that program. And so we take youth, I call them youth or kids to me, but young adults uh, 17 to 23 can be in that program. And, and so that is primarily down on Northwood, uh, real close to here in, in Platte County. And so uh, we do take the kids in, they, they have a, a longer, they can stay up to 18 months. It's education driven. We have relationships where we can get internships for them. Uh, we want them to teach, to learn a skill set that will um, provide them with a wage sustaining or family sustaining wage going into the future. So something other than your minimum wage job. So we're wanting them to learn a skill. And we've had a lot of luck with that. Um, but they meet again with a caseworker each week. Uh, it is education-based, so they have to work and attend classes that total 40 hours a week. Um, they have their life skill classes, and they also have their budget counseling. So that has been very successful. Uh, we have a blessings program, and the blessings program we found that many of our churches said, you know, we have benevolence funds, but we really don't know who's scamming and who's not, and we could do some help with that. So churches provide... Um, our blessings director with whatever they want to give each year. So say they give $1,000 a year to the blessings program, we double that. And we, you, that particular church has $2,000. And so when somebody walks in the door, uh, you can give them the paper, required paperwork. They set up an appointment with our blessings director, David Johnson, and they come in and they sit down with David and David has them fill out paperwork. They have to prove that they are a citizen of the US, that they are working full time. Uh, they bring all of their bills to him. He checks out MacLink, which is what um, an online resource that tells you where all they've been and determines whether they truly need help or whether they're just you know, trying to scam the, the system. And so uh, we have 35 churches that participate in that program. It is, um, oh, other, okay, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. The senior volunteer community is another program that we consider uh, as part of our thrift shop shops. Uh, a lot of times folks, when they retire, they feel disconnected, especially if they lose a spouse, they're lonely, they um, just don't have a purpose anymore. And so the community within those thrift shops is phenomenal. I love to go in there, I call it Santa's workshop, but when you walk through those back rooms and they're all uh, working together side by side, they have formed friendships. Uh, we do a lot of things. Uh, we do breakfast and pre-COVID, we did a lot of things. Um, it's been a little bit tough this last year, but we try to build a sense of community with our older uh, generation and they really, really connect and they love coming in and uh, they have told many of us over and over and over, you saved my life. I just didn't want to get up anymore. And so we feel really good about that, that program. The thrift provides low cost items to those in need. So uh, that's one of the things, again, that is very rewarding to the thrift staff is to be able to help that mom that comes in with five children that says, I can't afford coats for my kids and they're cold. So we take care of that for them. And so 
it provides a, yet one more layer of a way that we can connect with the community and provide needs. And we also have a community service option. We have a lot of folks that uh, the, the drug courts and the DUI courts uh, will send us for uh, community service. They have to work so many hours. And so that gives us an opportunity to touch them while they're with us as well. How HBC can assist your business if you have a business, and this would apply to your church as well, uh, provide program to homeless employees who qualify. Uh, businesses are our best referral source. Oftentimes the HR department knows, um, you know, they've got somebody that maybe Joe comes in and says, you know, I wish Harry would get off my couch. He's been sleeping on my couch and I can't get him out of my home. Uh, that we have literally had um, HR departments that refer those folks to us and then we take them in and get them back on their feet and, and provide them with the dignity uh, and the help that they need. We provide applicants uh, uh, for open positions to businesses here in the area. Uh, it, I know a lot of businesses right now are really, really hurting for employees. So when we have folks that are looking, and, you know, we try to plug them into our area businesses. And then we also offer uh, volunteer hours for employees. So if you have a youth group or if you have a church group that wants to volunteer, a women's group, a men's group, uh, we provide uh, volunteer opportunities, particularly through the thrift stores, uh, because right now we're really hurting because our volunteers are not wanting to, to be in the, the COVID environment. And so we've had to hire quite a few people to, to fill that gap. And so we are uh, working diligently to, to stay ahead. Uh, how homeless employees, if you, and, and this, I know some of you may not be employers, but um, if you hear, pick up on conversation that somebody says, you know, my grandson's sleeping on my couch, I wish I could get him out, or, uh, you know, we've walked into parking lots at night in the dark and found moms and children asleep in the cars. They don't want to be found because they don't want their children taken from them, and they're doing the very best job they can taking care of them. You know, if you trip on something like that or you hear about something like that, please refer them to our program so that we can uh, reach out and, and help. So they may be couch surfing, they may be talking about eviction. You know, I've got two weeks and I'm going to get evicted. Um, just direct them to our website. Uh, they can be submitted online. And I will tell you, uh, I don't have on this uh, particular PowerPoint, but just recently, one of the things we get really excited about being independent is that we are always looking at the community and saying, where can we help? Um, the, the folks that are coming to us, we are seeing a lot of mental health issues. And I know you're hearing this in the news. It is a, a, an epidemic right now. And so uh, decided that after much consultation and, and um, discussion, we opened a counseling center about two weeks ago and we're super excited about that. We've hired a qualified mental health professional. Uh, she's phenomenal. And she is building relationships with psychiatrists in the community. And we are now providing um, professional counseling services to our folks. You know, our young adults come with abuse, with neglect. Um, our families come with, it's just the, the things that, that they, present are endless. And so we really feel good about the fact that we now have that qualified mental health professional that can meet with them on a weekly basis. And she walks them through a checkup from the neck up is her, her tagline. And so uh, we are super excited about what that program is going to do and, and where it will develop uh, in the future. And so that's our most recent rollout. Um, that's again, a, a business related slide, but just to, to let us know if you have an opening anywhere, you know of an opening anywhere, we do put that on a bulletin board um, because one of the things we do encourage is um, if you're making $10 an hour, why don't we try to find something at $15 an hour so that you have a little bit more disposable income. And so um, I spend a lot of time in the community trying to find those positions and, and companies that I think I want to refer our folks to. So Ways to get involved, um, obviously let us know if you have employment opportunities, you can volunteer. Most of our volunteering is at the thrifts, but we do have budget counselors. Uh, sometimes we, we bring on mentors um, for the young adults. We have our annual gala and auction, and I do have a lot of uh, flyers back there that detail the young adult, the 90 day um, opportunities for uh, the thrift operations. And I have a gala card back there too that 
uh, we're going to have to be virtual again this year, but we are going to play a video uh, and that'll showcase stories from some of our graduates. And those are always uh, really enlightening to hear what these people have been through and uh, where they're at today because of the program. And uh, it'll have a silent auction that runs alongside it. The, we have micro events that people are welcome to uh, come to. And also a micro event is something that somebody else actually puts on for the benefit of Hillcrest. And so uh, we have a golf tournament coming up here in September that Heartland Community Church is gonna put on for us. Uh, those are great ways to fundraise that doesn't take away from our time as, as uh, staff at Hillcrest because there aren't enough of us to go around. And so having getting to, to let someone else take on that fundraising for us is phenomenal. Matching donations, if you do it, if you make a donation, see if your employer will match your donations. And then donation drives. We've recently reached out to churches because our um, thrift stores were running short of clothing because uh, of the unemployment numbers and, and all of the crazy COVID uh, going on. A lot of people are coming into the thrift stores to, to meet their needs. And so uh, we've been running really short on clothing. So uh, clothing drives are, are welcome. So that is it uh, in a nutshell. I know we're going to take our questions in a minute, so I'll conclude and hopefully we'll get to talk in a little bit. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, well, Hillcrest Platte City is really and in, truly instrumental in addressing the homelessness situ situation here in, in Platte County. I, I, I'm just... I take a pause because we interact with, at the Living Center, we interact with people in unhoused situations. And so we know the intersectionality that, that Platte, Hillcrest Platte County is dealing with and the, the humanizing that they're putting back into, the, into these people and the dignity that they're forming and fostering is, is truly uh, a service to our community. Um, it reminds me of that starfish story, right? It, it's, it, it's making a difference one at a time over and over and over again. And it's, it's amazing to watch. It's amazing to be a part of and to know that our community has that support. So thank you very much. So now I will introduce our last speaker, another Deborah, Deborah Gwynn. Uh, Deborah Gwynn is a Northlander and a longtime public servant in the Clay County Public Administrator's Office. Debbie joined the Senior Fund as the Executive Director in 2019 from Our Care Inc., a Kansas-based nonprofit, where she served as a court-appointed guardian and conservator for Kansas residents. A board member and past president of the Missouri Association of Public Administrators, her contributions were recognized in 2015 with the Public Administrator of the Year Award given by that organization. Beyond her work in the, in the Missouri Public Administrators Association, she has been active in a number of other organizations and community groups, including the Northland Professionals on Aging and the Northland Community Services Coalition, where she is a board member. Debbie was a past board member of the Missouri Association of Counties and is a certified guardian by the National Center for Guardianship Certification. Debbie has been a member of the National Guardianship Association since 2004, and she was recognized in 2013 with the National Certified Guardian Excellence Award, and in 2016 received the Fred Kretz Cornerstone Award given by the Center for Guardianship Certification. And here we are with Debbie Gwynn. Well, thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm really um, happy to be here. And I wanna first apologize to my, my two speakers. Uh, my son was calling me, I have it on silent, but when you have, um, you have an emergency blocker and it, it'll ring anyway, and so that's what happened. So I want to apologize to my, my other fellow speakers here, but um, it's, a, it's great for Marcus to uh, invite me and to speak about a passion that I have that's near and dear to my heart, which are older adults. And um, like Marcus said, I was a guardian and conservator for many, many years of older adults or anyone with uh, a mental health. So thank you, Karen, for your service. Um, Hillcrest has been a wonderful um, asset to clients through a public administrator's office. Doesn't matter what county it is, but they are a wonderful resource to have. But here in Platte County, we have the Platte County Senior Fund, which serves, um, you can go on the next page, which serves um, any county resident, um, 
60 or over, and we help them age in place. We support our seniors by a variety of different programs. Um, and some are free, some are a flat, um, flat fee, and some are also income based. So we just want to make sure that our seniors have the independence and the ability to stay in their home as long as they are able to. Next page, page please. So our common goal, like I said, is to have um, maintain the best quality of life for them. Um, also to help them when they're experiencing problems to help them through some of those things and find some resources for them. Next page. So one of our biggest programs that we have is transportation. And um, they, we provide six round trip rides per month for medical appointments, um, pharmacy um, pickups, for groceries, for um, essential businesses like um, going to your lawyer's office or a tax preparer, or even sometimes a trip to the courthouse. Uh, we also have to have 24 hours notice um, when we uh, schedule these rides and they have to be done before two o'clock because we got to get to our vendors to make sure that they have enough um, notice for those rides. Um, they're $5 each way, so $10 for a round trip for ambulatory and for a wheelchair client, it's $10 each way, so 20. And then um, our new program that the board thought was very, very important the beginning of this year was to make sure that all our older adults here in Platte County had free transportation to the COVID vaccine centers and also to have um, free rides to get a COVID test if they had to have a procedure or some kind of surgery. Um, also, we just uh, started in July, we're going to start giving free rides for influenza, so our, for the flu vaccine. So starting in September, um, when they come rolling out, we'll be able to do that as well. Well, when we have um, a client that has, you know, cancer treatments or dialysis, they have 14 rides per month. So they are our frequent um, riders and they are um, allowed those, those 14 rides per month. Next slide, please. One of our other programs that um, we have is our personal safety monitoring. So when you fall and you need some help and assistance, um, doesn't matter where you're at, you need, you need help and you need it right then. So our personal safety monitoring is very, very good for somebody that is wants to get out in the yard to go pick up their mail at their mailbox, but they're very unsteady and they wanna make sure that they don't fall. So we um, provide a personal safety monitor system. Can you, next slide. So where, what you do is you, it's, you have a call button, it's either on your wrist or a pendant and you press the button in case you fall. And sometimes you have, um, you can also ask for a fall um, assist um, device. They're all um, available with all our models. Um, the service operator will talk to you from the unit and they call the person that you want them to contact. So you work that out with the company. Um, next slide, please. Our in-home services. Now that's an income-based um, service. That's something that you would call the office and uh, get the number of hours that you could qualify for. And also we need to have an income verification done for that service. But we have Homemaker, which is light housekeeping and some errand um, runs and also we have personal care that's assistance with you know bathing and um, morning routines um, dressing and things like that and then also for respite care we have that for the caretaker because it's really really hard for a caretaker um, when they need to go do some errands but they don't want to leave their loved ones so we have respite care next slide please Minor home repair, we have this. This is also an income-based service. Um, the household allotment is $2,000 a year. So minor home repairs, we work with Northland Neighborhoods, Inc. Um, they cover the whole Northland, Clay and Platt. And they will work on, you know, weatherization. They work on um, leaky toilets. Um, they clean your gutters. They're, they just have a variety of, of services that they can provide. So you could call the office with um, any more details on that. Um, next slide, please. 
accessibility is very, very important because um, next month in September is um, National Falls Week, September the 20th through the 24th. Accessibility really, really helps that individual who is scared of falling because they've had so many falls. And we wanna make sure that their um, home is safe when they come home from the hospital um, and to make sure that they feel confident about moving around in their own home. So we work with um, Rebuilding Together KC. And again, the household allotment is $2,000, but they help with grab bars and um, toilet risers, um, handheld sh um, shower wands and things like that. So um, call the office and we can help you and get connected with that. And also we'd have to do a income verification on that service as well. Next slide, please. Um, home systems, um, we have um, several um, contractors that um, replace or repair um, air conditioners and hot water heaters and also furnaces. So um, there is another income base, but the household allotment is 2000 and a verification of income would um, be needed to start those services. All right, next slide. Nutrition and social engagement. This is um, a really um, great center that we have located here in Platte County. Um, right now they're closed due to the pandemic, but um, they provide socialization, activities, a hot meal when they are open. They also do the Meals on Wheels, or as they call it, home delivered meals. And um, they also have different exercise programs. I know um, several ladies that do yoga there at the senior center. So if you want any information about them, just call their office at 270-4100. They'd be able to help you because their staff is still there. They're just not open to the public for um, events right now. Next slide. Our wellness program, we have partnered with the YMCA here in Parkville in Platte City and in Riverside. And we give discounts to 60 and over for um, an annual membership. So um, you can call the Y's and check and see, you know, what, what benefits you can get. And um, they work really, really well. And I'm really, really happy to have um, this partnership, you know, making sure that all of us stay well and healthy and um, the classes that they have are just um, phenomenal. So next slide. Support groups. I'm really, really proud of this program because um, Northland Grand Families is very, very near and dear to my heart because it assists those grandparents that are raising those grandchildren. Because when I served as public administrator, I saw a lot of grand families really struggling. And um, I, it just, it, it makes my heart feel really, really good that we can have this program for our grandparents because I'm a grandparent and I, I just, I just am in awe in what these, these individuals do. So we have monthly support groups and we have educational topics. I know one um, month we had um, Platte County Board of Services at one of the meetings to help with um, grandparents who had a developmentally disabled um, grandchild. We also had the Platte County Public Administrator talk about guardian and conservatorships. And then we also had Becky Franklin who runs this um, program from Tri-County Mental Health. Um, she was there to help with the older adult program. So that's a really good um, program that we offer. And I'm very, very proud of the board members for approving this for our, our seniors. Next slide. One thing we have is the magnets. We have the file of life, which everybody wants. We have the, the large size that puts on your refrigerator and it puts all your pertinent information um, for you because when, if you fall and you cannot speak or you cannot you know, tell them your name, everything that they need to know is on that magnet, on your refrigerator. It has everything from your medication to your blood type, to your doctors, to your contact, your emergency contact. And then we also have one for your wallet or in your purse. So if you're out and about, um, you have that information in your purse as well. So if you need one, stop by the office and we can get you um, them as well. Next slide. Um, information and referrals, we do this all the time, all day long. I mean, they call for everything. We can't, we can't help them. We don't offer these programs, but we know who to call. And I have put um, the Northland 
community services coalitions um, directory back there. It has a list of everything in the Northland that you need from libraries to government to city halls to um, Hillcrest, um, Platte County, all kinds of different um, information that you could um, you would need. So um, and also, you know, attorneys, um, guardian and conservatorship information, government officials, it has everything listed in that directory. Uh, next slide, please. Donations, we um, have on several occasions because over, over this past year, um, seniors have been very, very isolated and they have needed to go to the doctor. Um, we have received so many different, just small donations. Um, from individuals that are so grateful for all the services that that we do. Um, so this is one way of people to give back to our, our fund because we are um, we, we accept the donations, but we accept them through Truman Community um, Foundation. Um, next slide, please. And here's my contact information. Um, I'm there. We're open from eight to four thirty every day. You need any help? We're we're there to help, and that's what that's what we're we that's our vision. That's what we love to do, and we love to help um, anyone that needs our services or help them find some resources. So I put some brochures back there too. Kind of tells you all about our programs, and I also want to make one other um, comment about um, the. There's a senior farmers market nutrition program and seniors can have um, vouchers for food at farmers markets. They're going to have a sign up on August 27th at the Platte County Resource Building where we are located. And it's going to be in the auditorium from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I wanted people to know about this um, program as well. Denise Sullivan is the one that's um, going to be can take the applications. And I put some of these flyers back there on the back. Um, I also wanted to mention that Marcus and I, we are partnering together. We're going to have an event here for National Falls on September 27th at 2 o'clock. So I'm going to be here with Amy Vance from um, AV Yoga, and we're going to talk about Senior Falls and um, how you can help to gain more strength. And then starting on October 4th, we're going to start A Matter of Balance, and I put several of those flyers back there as well. So um, that's about it. And we will have, I guess, our questions and answers here. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie Gwynn. Um, your, one thing is that your passion and commitment are truly inspiring. It's, it comes out in how you talk, what's been built, and how, um, how you're passionate. It, it, it just comes out really well. And it, it's it's a magnetizing. So thank you for that. Um, it's interesting how the focus on seniors has built a sustaining safety net for our senior citizens. And it's a really interesting story how the senior fund, the origin and how this got established. And that's a very interesting story on how individuals can make national, state, and local change through legislation and through the, the funding sources that support these senior services. So that's another story I hope we'll get into uh, in the future. Um, this is again is for all seniors and and I, I'm looking forward to the question and answers because uh, as a non senior I'm interested on how we can support and so um, if we just take a minute here to uh, transform this uh, stage into our question and answer area we'll be uh, we'll continue with that in just a minute. All right. Getting the other camera spotlighted. It's taking a second, huh? Yeah, it takes a second sometimes. This is what the joy of editing will allow us to fix afterwards. So I'll just wait for the camera to switch and then we'll uh, get started. 
So uh, while we're waiting for that to switch, we can start thinking of our questions. And um, there you go. And uh, also for those uh, participants on Zoom, if you uh, would like to ask questions, please use the chat um, icon on the Zoom window and, and uh, ask your questions through that function there. So now to begin our question and answer portion, I'll open it up to the, our in-house audience if there's any questions. You can please ask, uh, raise, raise your hand or ask any questions. I'll have to repeat those for the microphone um, so that people on Zoom can hear. Yes? Okay, now I'll just repeat the question for the Zoom participants, and that was for AAUW membership, what are the qualifications and pathways to join? Um, we have student members and students at our affiliate colleges, which includes Park University, uh, the Metropolitan Community Colleges, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, they can have a free, what they call an e-affiliate membership, and they can do that online. Uh, for regular members, uh, anyone with a certificate, a two-year degree, a four-year degree or higher is eligible for membership. Um, now, uh, while we take a second, I'll ask Mike if there are any questions on Zoom. There aren't any yet. Well, that's all right. I've got some questions lined up I'd like to ask. Let me just ask one real quick. And this is for Hillcrest Platte County. How many residents annually go through your housing program and how many are on the waiting list on an estimate? Okay, We have 34 apartments that um, are available to the residents and they turn on average of every 90 days. So wow. I'm going to say 100 to 120 wow. a year. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And we do have a waiting list. The, if there's a process to be uh, being uh, entered into the, the program, you make an application online, you fill that out, and then you have to call in every day to keep uh, reminding us, basically, it, it's a test to see how, how uh, resilient you're going to be and how bad do you want to get in. And so um, they call in every day to say, yes, I'm still interested. They're called in for a first interview they go through that interview. They are drug tested. Uh, they do have to be drug and alcohol free. And then uh, they will be called in for a second interview. So the process from application to um, entering the program could take anywhere from you know, three to 10 days. It just depends. Wow. Yeah. Question out here in the audience. Uh, and that question is for Hillcrest, do you just serve Flat County? That is our primary, but that is not, we are not exclusive. We serve anyone. So if someone, you know, we had a young lady that was in the Shawnee Mission Hospital that uh, they called because they were desperately searching for a program for her. She was 19 years old um, and we went down and picked her up and brought her, brought her up. So not, we're not exclusive. No. And that follow-up question is, are pets permitted? And there was no. Um, I have a question here for the Platte County Senior Fund. Um, again, like I was alluding to, being a non-senior, but really interested and in, in, in passionate about intergenerational uh, learnings and, and community, how can a non-senior support the Platte County Senior Fund or its individual programs? Well, um some programs we have had volunteers um, lately with the pandemic. And since I've been there, we have not. Um, but. Volunteer through each program? Volunteer. Um, and also, really, they can really volunteer through PSSI, which is a Platt Senior Services um, Senior Center. So that would be the best bet because they always need you know, drivers for home delivered meals, which that's what they've been doing during this whole pandemic is making sure that seniors do not go hungry. Right on. Yeah, because I was thinking that, um, thank you, that uh, the resource to connect senior, 
say, for example, my parents, you know, how, what would I, how can I make that connection, you know, and some, I think it's just all about reaching out and making the phone call. And that's what I've heard is that, that this is a, this is the connection. This is a, the resource for everything that a senior may need. This is a starting point for that connection. And, and so I, I guess this isn't really a question as much as just something that I'm really happy to say out loud that for any need that comes up for senior citizens, we have a connection point. And that's really, really awesome and inspiring for me. So thank you. Right, and because we're only um, one out of 55 counties that have a senior levy fund. There's 115 counties in the state of Missouri. We are one of the lucky ones. And I have to thank Marty Zersky for really striving and, and putting all her efforts in back in 1989 to get this passed. So thank you very much, Marty. Marty is also a founding board member. She still serves on the board. She is committed to the community and to seniors. So thank you very much, Marty, from the bottom of my heart. We, there are a lot of questions that uh, are actually responses about how wonderful this program was, first off. And so lots of compliments about the program that you offer, the programs that everyone offers. Uh, Carla Dodds has a question she, for Hillcrest. She wants to know how many young adults does Hillcrest serve each year? We have the, the we have we purchased four plexes and we have two four plexes that are devoted to young adults currently. Each one of those uh, we put two per apartment. So we have room for um, 16 young adults. Uh, their program is a little longer term, and so um, they can stay up to 18 months. Now, having said that, it is a very volatile age. We might have one come in and say, after a month, I'm out of here. You know, structure's not my thing, and they leave. We just had two that we moved to Next Steps to Success because they were doing so well that just needed to complete some schooling. And so, you know, on average, we might uh, process, I would say 35 to 40 a year. Some, some hang in there and some don't. That was, that was it from Zoom. All right. Um, so are there any other questions from the audience? Any engagement here? No? I think we've done a good job at, a, at providing connection points to all of these resources, whether it's, you know, seniors, homelessness, or the, the women's movement that's happening right now. I, I, I kind of don't want to summarize it because these, these ladies have done such an amazing job at explaining, setting up, and leading these organizations that I'd really just let the organization speak for themselves. I'll make connection points on our website, um, but I really want to stress how I don't want to say easy, but how comfortable it is to make these connections and to reach out and pick up the phone and to get some questions answered that you may have. And these, these ladies and these organizations are so willing to connect, to help and to support this community elevate that, um, that it's okay if you have a question later and it comes to a person that you're not really sure about, you know, we can, the Living Center, Senior Fund, Hillcrest, AAUW, these are just a sample of the many services that we have that support our community and ways in which we can live into our purpose as community members. And so I just wanted to stress that before we close and thank Parkville Presbyterian Church for letting us use this space, for all of our speakers for coming in and, and offering your time to share with our community and for our attendance both on Zoom and in person. Thank you so much for, for coming here, for being curious and for taking what you learn here out in the community and continuing the conversation. Um, the Parkville Living Center is a, is, is a blossoming beginning organization. So we can use all the support that, that you, you can offer. So please visit our website, see ways that you can connect and help us to continue these forums and to continue the work of connecting our community with the services and organizations that exist here for us, for our community. 
for you. So thank you very much. And that concludes our town hall for tonight.